G'day. Rock and roll means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For me, it's the way I make a living and I employ a few other people in the meantime. Most of all, it's about fun. It's about enjoying yourself. About songs and dancing and sticking posters up on the walls. About getting away from the things that bother you. About listening to the things that you like to listen to. About dancing. But rock and roll is also a business. Rock and roll is about selling things. It's about selling songs. Songs that are products. Products like this can of baked beans. It's a big business with record companies, radio stations, musical equipment manufacturers, television, newspapers, fashion. All that is rock and roll. What starts off as a simple song or baked bean can end up making someone a lot, a lot of money. I guess that's rock and roll. There's many steps involved in creating the image of musicians and music. But of course there's a great many myths attached also to the idea of how it all comes about, what you hear on radio, television. And of course the reality behind the myth is that these images have to be manufactured, produced, promoted and sold in a way pretty much like a can of baked beans. So let's have a look at the myth right now. The rock industry is like any other industry in this country or in any country where that industry exists. It's part of a larger economic system and that system is capitalism. If you understand that, that's the rule of thumb that will govern any dealing you have with that business, which is you invest X amount of money to get X plus back. It's not sort of a monolith. There's a lot of different doors. There's a lot of different avenues and approaches. But behind each one of those doors, there is that same motive. If you understand that, you're in a good position, just like Monopoly. The first time we did a tour, we got a phone call from Melbourne and this guy said, oh, look, come down, we've got all these gigs, there's a million people who want to see you, unbelievable, it'll change your life, yes, yes, OK, we're going. So we hire this van at, like, some ridiculous rate because we don't know where else to hire, so we, you know, Avis, like everybody else does, and we jump in it and we, you know, go down there and we do all these gigs and we're sleeping in this terrible place and living on baked beans and all that stuff, and we get home and we've lost a fortune. It's great fun, like everybody has a really good time, so we go, oh, we don't really have anyone who does account, so we just pay all those bills and discover that we in fact have to do some more gigs to pay for that tour. But someone can come in and say, well look, there is all these other ways of hiring that are not available to the general public, they're available to, you know, entertainment industry or whatever that are much cheaper and there are certain motels that will give you a cut rate because you're in, again, the entertainment industry or whatever, you're a regular basis type thing. Um, that stuff that was important for us to learn about because uh, suddenly we were, we could pick up, you know, anything up to say three, four thousand dollars by knowing that stuff in a couple of months. You've got a band. You think you're good are controlled more or less by specific agencies so if you get with one agency you'll be able to get into these pubs but not those pubs um, you'll work with these bands but not those bands so there's all that stuff uh, which I think again it's good to know because in the short term you may feel really frustrated because you want to you want to get somewhere and you know you think oh well they're not really on about what we're on about so um, like on the one hand, they can get you into the live situation, but at what price, you know, at what cost to you? That's what you have to understand. Again, they are businessmen. They are there to make profit. If you understand that as a motive, it makes what's going on much more understandable to you, much clearer to you.